Hi, my name is Chen. This is a presentation for the final project of pattern recognition class in University of Florida. The topic I'm going to present is supervised partial membership latent DH location. This proposed method supervised PMLDA can be considered as a combination of partial membership LDA and a labeled LDA. So LDA is a generative model which has been widely used for undercovering the latent topics in text. So let me have a brief review of LDA model. LDA is a clustering algorithm which can group co-occurring words among documents into different topics. Suppose we have corpus that contains three documents. Uh, so LDA can learn several topic word distribution for this corpus. For example, organize, lead, committee have high probabilities in the first topic, which we can interpret it as government topic. Words such as mercury, pollutes um, have high probability in the second topic. This topic may be pollution. So I'm going to show the graphing model of LDA step by step. A corpus contains some documents. In this example, D equals 3 means there are three documents. In the document level, each document contains some words. I use N superscript D to represent the number of points in document D. In word level, each word is an observable to the model, so the gray circle means this is observable. Then we have K topics. Beta is a parameter of the per topic word distribution. So the general model of LDA assumes that the words can be considered as they are drawn from these topic word distributions. The first latent variable is that the LDA length is topic assignment for each word, Z and D. For example, the leadership in the first document is assigned topic 1. The second latent variable that LDA learns is the topic proportion for each document, pi D. For example, 19% of total words in document 1 are from topic 1, and 10% of the words are from topic 2. Then people apply LDA to object characterization in image. In this case, one image is a document. Each image patch is a visual word. Then the generated vocabulary also contains some image patches. Each word is assumed to be drawn from the word distribution of each topic. For example, this rock, rock patch is drawn from the mountain topic, and this sand patch is drawn from the ocean topic. Similarly, we can compute the topic proportion in this image, which is 14% mountain topic and 16% ocean topic. Then LDA has been further applied for hyperspectral image mixing recently. So a hyperspectral image is a three-dimensional data cube. It contains two spatial dimensions and one spectral dimension. Compared with common RGB image, which, which only have three channels, three bands, red, green, blue, a hyperspectral image can have hundreds of bands covering from visible to near IR. Since the spatial resolution of each pixel is usually several meters or tens of meters, each pixel is actually contains more than one material. Therefore, hyperspectral mixing is giving an image estimate the pure uh, material signatures and their corresponding proportions in each pixel. So pure pixel is called end member. The, uh, sorry, the pure material is called end member. For example, this pixel contains three material. So it is spectrum can be uh, considered as the convex combination of these three end member spectra. The mod most widely used model for hyperspectral mixing is linear mixing model and uh, each pixel is uh, so in linear mixing model each pixel is a convex combination of the end members and the proportion values. Okay.
So now I'm going to introduce what is partial memory through LDA and how it is related to hyperspectral image. Again, I will explain this idea by using graphic model. So each hyperspectral image is assumed to be a corpus. Then the image is segmented to be some spatial continuous region called superpixels. Each superpixel is a document in PMLDA. Each pixel spectrum is a word. Then PMLDA assumed that the topic is an exponential family distribution such as Gaussian beta distribution. So the end member means we would like to estimate is a topic mean. So the hyperspectral image is assumed to be drawn from this topic word distributions. Okay, now here is a major change between PMLDA and LDA. In LDA, only one topic can be assigned to each word. But in PMLDA, PMLDA makes the topic assignment fuzzy, which means multiple topics can be assigned to each word with some membership. So each pixel can be assigned with multiple end members, such as the more, such as this pixel can be considered as 70% uh, blue roof and 30% sidewalk. So PMLD introduced another latent variable, which is a scanning factor, to control the mixing level. This is the general process for PMLDA. So the reason you prefer PMLDA than LDA for hyperspectral image and mixing is that PMLDA models end member proportion in each pixel. But LDA can only provide binary end member proportion. Then in this project, motivated by labeled LDA, which is a supervised LDA method, I introduced a supervised PMLDA as PMLDA by introducing a supervised label set, lambda, for each document. So lambda is a binary matrix indicating the possible topics that each document contain, may contain. One means this document may contain this topic and zero means this document cannot contain this topic. Then I did an experiment on a real hyperspectral image. Santa Barbara is data set. This data set has 178 bands. Since the data set is too big, I select the sub image for, this, for the experiments. The sub image is 16, 16 by 16 by 178. So first I run normalized card to generate the super pixels. So this is code for normalized cards. Let's run it to see. So it is doing a hierarchical normalized cut segmentation. Okay, so you can see this is a generated super pixel. Okay. So this plots through all pixel spectrum in this sub image. Since many of them are similar to each other, I reduced the vocabulary size by using k-means to generate. 500 class centers. So these 500 class centers can be considered as the vocabulary. Therefore, several very similar pixels can be the same word in the vocabulary. So first I run the uh, LDA to estimate the topic assignment for each word, which is an member assignment for each pixel. So this is actually the classification. Then you can compute, so it has four 
it has four classes. Then you can compute the four class means to get n to get the n member spectrum. This one. And then compare it to the ground truth. So this ground truth is not real ground truth because there's no ground truth provided for most hyperspectral image. So the evaluation is not easy to do. So I manually pick the purest point in each class and consider them as the uh, ground truth. So you can see the LD result uh, is compared with the ground truth. This one is not estimated, so one spectrum is not est is not estimated in LDA. Okay. And you can see this from the classification map. These two white white blue region should be in the same class, but LDA wrongly classify them apart. Okay. So let me show you the LDA code. So I download this LDA code from website. Okay, so it's a very fast converge, and uh, so Z is the topic assignment for each word. So we are total four topics. This is how I generate the classification map. Um, then I run the PMLDA. Since I, I wrote the PML code and the supervised PMLDA code in my lab, so right now it's not very fast to converge now, so you can see the spiky thing. Uh, but we can still see the main shape of the four and four add members that ha has been that have been estimated. So you can see uh, they are the shape are very similar, but it's spiky. So I, I think this result is better than the LDA results. Then this is the proportion map of each end member in each pixel. So LDA, PM LDA did a good job separating different end members. And based on the proportion map, you, you can generate the classification by finding the maximum proportion in each pixel. The classification of PM LDA is much better than, than LDA because the white roof region now are in the same class. And most of the boundaries of this image have, have been estimated. So let me show you the PMLD code. Okay, so it start running. So I'm gonna stop because it takes uh, several hours. Oh, not several hours. S several tens of mini min minutes to converge. So let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so. The next step is I made a supervised label set for SPMLDA and I repeat the same experiment. So since there is a supervision, the algorithm converge faster than PMLDA and the estimated end members are smoother, so you can see. And they are very similar spectrum. Also, the estimated proportion maps are smoother and more separable than PMLDA. See the they have very high proportion value for each class, for each end member. The classification is similar to PMLDA since there is a lack of ground truth, so there is no way to quantitatively evaluate the classification. So this is the SPMLDA code. So it's very similar to PMLDA code. Just add a label set to it. So I'm gonna to stop because this takes a long time to converge. Okay. So in conclusion, I propose a supervised PMLDA to both incorporating the supervised labels for each document 
and the fuzzy topic assignment for each word. So the experiment on real hyperspatial image shows that the proposed method is effective for hyperspatial image unmixing and classification. Thank you.